Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house. With me, your host, Khadija. Uh, I'm going to try to put this up, load this up to YouTube again, and hopefully this time it survives. Uh, it survives the cut. Okay, how about that? And that cut is this story that I brought a little while ago. I want y'all to deal with this. Okay? Because if you don't deal with it, then that means this is why they don't want real studies and real conversation to take place amongst people who don't just blindly follow and allow people to just uh, pick their leaders and their gods for them. This tradition, in my opinion, is one of the most destructive, one of the most destructive traditions that we don't talk about very much. Okay. But we're quick to talk about anti-Semitism, uh, who's Semitic and who's not. But I think it's real important that this article I from the C reported that the New York District Attorney's Office is reportedly investigating the death of a two-week-old boy who went who underwent Maza Bipe. Okay, Maziza Bipe, a controversial Orthodox. Jewish ritual that involves orally sucking the blood from the circumcised penis of a baby. Now, according to the unidentified boy's death certificate, he contracted herpes simplex 1 from the ritual and passed away at a Brooklyn hospital in September of 2011. We are looking into the circumstances surrounding the death of the child, of this child, said Brooklyn District Attorney. Now, I just want y'all to look how this is handled. It is important to note that the Metzispa, uh, known as the Metza, or the oral suction, is not commonly practiced part of the Jewish circumcision ceremony. It is in the uncommon ritual, the model or rabbi performing a circumcision uses his mouth to draw blood away from the circumcision wound. While in the past, this has helped limit complications from the procedure, the danger of passing diseases orally, such as herpes, has led many to use sterilized glass tube as a barrier or a straw to clean the wound. According to the New York Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, most adults have oral herpes but don't know don't show symptoms. Listen to this. And the disease is spread easily from slide. Cut. The department does not recommend infants undergo this ritual because there is no proven way to reduce herpes, herpes transmission. The department suggests parents speak to their mohel, 
before circumcision, since some parents might not know whether or not he'll perform the ritual. Y'all heard that? Did you hear that? So, so the two week old boy that died after contracting herpes and through a religious circumcision ignited controversy in 2005 after another infant died. The unidentified infant died September 11th at the hospital. The cause of death was listed as disseminated herpes simplex. It's unclear who performed the circumcision. In 2004, health officials revealed that a baby boy died after a circumcision was carried out by a Rockland County rabbi who specializes in centuries-old ultra-Orthodox ritual known as Metzibetpa. Now, I'm not here to question anybody's belief system. I'm not here to do that. What I am here to do is to say that the children are in a hostage situation. They really are. And I know a black father, a pastor, who was arrested subsequently for child abuse and his son as well because they wouldn't seek medical or treatment because of their religious beliefs. One of the children was severely beaten um, and because it was time later, the school interjected and filed the necessary charges to have the father who was a, also a minister have him arrested. The elder, the father, wouldn't seek treatment for his daughter and she died of lock bowels. Something that so easily easily um, helped. She, she had a bowel obstruction and her stomach got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it was hard as a rock. And uh, her father never seeks medical attention. But these individuals, and because they had a second child that died as well for not seeking treatment, they were arrested. So I guess the question here is, when your belief system affects innocent children because they're the hostages in this situation, really. The kids are the hostages of our crazy beliefs, whatever they may be traditionally set, historically set, whatever. The children have to go along for the ride. And my question is sincere one. Do you think it's fair? Do you think that there should be some practices that are off limits when it affects the babies? Especially as young as two weeks. I'd like to know. 
Give me your thoughts on that. And I'll see you in the next video.